Hi, I'm Pat. And I'm Danny. Today we have a report for you on the Hollywood Studio System. We'll be explaining how the system came to be and how it worked while it was in place. The Hollywood Studio System refers to the means of film production and distribution dominant in Hollywood from the early 1920s through the early 1960s. This period was also known as the Golden Age of Hollywood because of the hit films produced. As film became a more popular form of media, several companies saw the opportunity to make money from producing films in large quantities. The film industry consisted of eight major companies made up of two groups known as the Big Five and the Little Three. The Big Five were Warner Brothers, Paramount, MGM, RKO, and 20th Century Fox. And the Little Three were Universal, United Artists, and Columbia. The Big Five were known for having full integration or complete control of the films they made from production to the theaters they were played in. Movies were often seen more as products than as works of art. Still around today, the Warner Brothers Company, started by these four gentlemen pictured, was a major player in the Big Five, producing such big hits in the Golden Age as The Jazz Singer. The Jazz Singer was the first feature-length motion picture with synchronized dialogue sequences. Propelled by the great success of The Jazz Singer, the first important feature-length talkie, small Warner Brothers click quickly entered the big leagues of filmmaking. Here's a clip from The Jazz Singer. And Dallas, oh, I'm going to take you to Coney Island. Yeah? Yes, I'm going to ride on the shoot to shoot. Oh. And you know, in the dark mill? Yeah. Ever been in the dark mill? Oh, no, I was Well, with me, it's all right. I'll kiss you and hug you and you feel. <laughs> now, Mama, Mama, stop now. They're getting kittenish. Mama, listen, I'm going to sing this like I will if I go on the stage, you know, with this show. I'm going to sing it jazzy. Now, get this. Blue sky, smiling at me, 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 me. Nothing but little blue sky, do I see? Do, 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 do. Wow, Danny, that was a great clip. Wasn't it? A special Academy Award was given to Warner Brothers for producing The Jazz Singer. Why is it that the producers won the award? That's simple. The companies often controlled all aspects of filming from how they were written to who acts in them. So the creative team changes often as in a true assembly line fashion. That makes sense. What films did Paramount make during the Golden Age? Many good ones. In particular, Wings. Wasn't that a silent movie about World War I? I believe that won the Academy Award for Best Picture. That's correct. Let's take a look. Paramount presents Wings, the first movie to win an Academy Award for Best Picture. The story of two men who have gone to war and the girl they left behind. Starring Clara Bow, the It Girl, Gary Cooper, Buddy Rogers, and Richard Arlen. Wings is a whopping air spectacle, dominated by remarkable aerial stunts, filled with action, shock, thrills, and tragedy. Twists of fate in love and war that catapults three people to their destinies. One of the greatest silent motion pictures ever made, Wings. That looked intense. Yeah, man. In fact, Paramount profited very substantially during the early sound era, which was during the late 1920s, after a slow period during the 1930s. Then they climbed back up to profitability during the booming 1940s. Hey, Danny. Yeah? Didn't film companies also control theaters and distribution? Yes, they did. In fact, their co control over most theaters made it so that some areas of the country only got movies from one company due to them owning all the theaters in the area. That sounds like a monopoly. The board game? No. Oh, right. Controlling an, uh, controlling an industry completely sure does sound like a monopoly. So that means that they own distribution rights like you said before? Yeah, we'll go after. We'll go. We'll discuss that after we go somewhere over the rainbow. The Wizard of Oz. That was a classic movie made by MGM. That's right, Pat. MGM bought the rights to the book before they turned filmed the movie. And it's still one of the most beloved movies of all time. Let's take a look at The Wizard of Oz. Thank you. 
wish I had ruby slippers. So does everyone, Danny. So does everyone. So you asked about distribution rights? I did. Well, since each company owned many theaters in different parts of America, they would show their films in other companies' theaters so the film could be seen anywhere. Because of this, if one company had a hit, the others profited from the people going to see it in their movie theaters. Wow, that sounds complicated. Yes, I know. Wasn't Shirley Temple acting during the Golden Age? Why, yes, she was. Let's watch a clip of her in Bright Eyes. Candyland Hour for all good children. The orchestra will play our theme song. You know that song, don't you? Sure I do. Well, then sing it. Come on, come on, come on. made by 20th Century Fox. Fox was in a theoretical second place during the Golden Age, only to the great MGM Studios. However, Shirley Temple decided to spend her early career with 20th Century Fox. That's correct. Most of the films Shirley Temple acted in during her childhood were made by Fox. Why is that? Like I said before, production companies controlled everything, including the actors and actresses. They were often under contract and couldn't work for any other company until the contract was up. So she stuck with Fox. Exactly. What about Citizen Kane? That was made under the studio system. Yes, that movie starred Orson Welles. Want to watch? Let's do this. I'll also provide them with a fighting and tireless champion of their rights as citizens and as human beings. Foster Kane, the fighting liberal, the friend of the working man, the next governor of this state. In 1916, as independent candidate for governor, the best elements of the state behind him, the White House seemingly the next easy step in a lightning political career. Then, suddenly... I'm an American. I've always been an American. Charles Foster Kane is, in fact, nothing more or less than a communist. If I hadn't been very rich, I might have been a really great man. Citizen Kane was released by RKO, a company in the Big Five. In fact, RKO was considered the weakest of the Big Five. But they released Citizen Kane, one of the greatest movies of all time. That's correct, but when they released it, it didn't do as well as they hoped. They actually lost money. Wow, that's disappointing. Anyway, the clips that were shown were all parts of movies released by Big, the Big Five during the golden age of Hollywood while the studio system was in place. While movies are still made in studios, the studio system isn't what it once was. What were those laws called again? The antitrust laws. These were laws passed during the Depression to prevent monopolies of business industries, much like the film industry. What about the Big Five made them mon a monopoly? Owning theaters, manufacturing, film manufacturing companies, and production companies themselves constituted vertical integration. What's vertical integration is a type of monopoly where a company owns all businesses that are involved with or related to their company. That's the reason the little three never succeeded during the golden age because each of them lacked one of the three elements that required for vertical integration. They just own their own theaters. Oh, right. Hey, Danny, we never really talked about the Little Three. Well, Little Three movies weren't seen as much during the Golden Age compared to the Big Five movies. Well, that said, I think United Artists is a very interesting company because they were founded by filmmakers and not businessmen. That's right. The studio was founded in 1919 by D.W. Griffith, Charlie Chaplin, Mary Pickford, and Douglas Fairbanks. United Artists also used the studio system to control actors' salaries and creative ideas. So the studio system ended in 1949. Yes, and so did the golden era of Hollywood. Many great films were produced under the studio system, some of the greatest of all time. 
Well, that's our report. I hope you learned something. Goodbye. Why do you always get the last words?